blessing for the month, which we didn't say on Shabbat. I recite a special blessing, you know, every time we have a new Hebrew month, we recite a, ple a special blessing for that month. I'll read it in English. <coughs> May it be your will, Hashem, our God, and the God of our forefathers, that you inaugurate this month upon us for goodness and for blessing. May you give us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of sustenance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame nor humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we will have love of Torah and fear of heaven, a life in which our heartfelt requests will be fulfilled for good. Amen, Selah. Amen. You, you notice something interesting. You will have thought that uh, we will ask a life of love of Torah. It's number one, possibly, because after all, we are the people of the book, as it's called, right? People of the Torah. Yet, interesting enough, we ask for all the physical sustenance, the physical pleasure, the physical blessings, and right at the end we come to, to the issue of Torah, right? Has anybody got any idea why the sages, after much deliberation, after much deliberation, remember, those prayers are a result of something like over 2,000 years of compilation that started way back based on the first and second temple on um, not just on the sacrifices for which we have the three times in a day that we, we pray morning afternoon and and uh, nightfall but also it is based on Abraham who instituted the uh, prayer for Shacharit first thing in the morning and Yitzhak who instituted the prayer for the afternoon Mimcha and then Jacob who instituted the prayer for nightfall so we got the three. Also, in the tree of life, there are three columns, right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the middle. Abraham signifies loving kindness, unconditional love. Yitzhak, Isaac signifies the um, attribute of judgment because he gave his life to be sacrificed, which fortunately he was not. But it, it came very close. So that's we call Midat Hadin in Hebrew, which means judgment, which means strictness. And the Jacob, glory, truth, came right in the middle to combine the two. So we are B'nai Israel today, we are the children of Jacob, okay? And Jacob took from both attributes. Sometimes we are judged, sometimes we have an issue with discipline for ourselves, for our kids, for our community, for our leaders. There's a point of discipline, of judgment. Other times we show overloving and tolerant behavior, almost no bounds to it. But somewhere along the line, 
comes to the attributes of Jacob and mixes the two. So there's no too much unconditional love and not too much judgment. In other words, we call it the golden mean, the golden path. Maimonides and the other great sages explain what is the golden path. Not too much of a good thing. For example, if you cruise every week or every month, first time, it's amazing. Second time, it's good. Third time, you know, after a few times, especially if you do it one after the other, I'm not talking about, you know, doing one cruise, two cruises a year, which is still something unique, but when you get used to it. I don't know about you guys, when I got uh, my, uh, my new car or the new house or whatever, as my hero Murray Banks explains, in the tablets of wonder, you know, the materialism, the whatever we want. So we think, oh, when I graduate, I'll be happy. And guess what? You graduate, you got your diploma, maybe you hang it on the wall, maybe you put it in your taxi cab because you can't get a job in the degree that you obtained. So you have to drive a taxi or a, or a lorry, I mean, not, nothing wrong with that. We all have to make a living. As long as, as long as it's kosher, you know, it's honest living, nothing wrong with it. Right? And then he says, oh, and then I get this, this, uh, this Cadillac or Rolls Royce or Bentley, whatever, I'll be happy and you got it. Or when I get this wonderful big house on the hill with seven bedrooms and so on, I'll be happy. And he said, you know what, after a few years. Or when I get this yacht, you know, I can go on the high seas. And what happens, you get seasick, you know. <laughs> so, well, what we're trying to say here, happiness and the balance, the equilibrium of our well-being, psychological, physical, emotional, is really an attribute which we create ourselves. Now coming back to the blessing for the new man, the Torah nevertheless says as follows. It says, God says to us, I don't want you to be in poverty. Poverty is nothing to be proud of, like he says in Fiddler of the Roof, right? <laughs> right? So, I may not become a millionaire, I don't want to kill myself, to burn myself out, you know, the people who work in the city, or in the stock exchange, or whatever they work. And many of them get to the age of 30, 35, 40, they're burnt out, you know, they're finished. Can you imagine, you see the stock market going up and down, up and down, and, you know, it's not easy, right? So, Rabbi Mayer has a beautiful uh, sentence on this. Rabbi Mayer, a very great uh, Mishnaic sage, some 200, 200, uh, 2000, sorry, 2000, 2000, uh, 200 years ago, so he's quoted in many places. Uh, Rabbi Meir came to my hometown, Tiberias, Tiberia, in Israel, and set up a yeshiva there. We have today's tombstone, and people go and, and pray, uh, and request, and so on. By the way, in Judaism, we never pray to the dead. Very, very important. So when you go on a tombstone on a grave of a very important rabbi, sage, we never pray to the dead. That's the other religions. We pray to God, but we ask God that the soul of the buried righteous, Rabbi will intercede on our behalf. It's a big difference. Big, big difference. We never pray to angels. They pray to angels. We don't pray to angels. We pray to God. As it happens, there's a relay in the heavenly realms. By the time the prayer is taken from here, transferred first to the land of Israel. From the land of Israel, it has to go to Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, it goes to the temple. From the temple, it goes to the Holy of Holies. And then there is a little channel there that takes it all up there. And there's a relay. Okay? In my lectures on Kabbalah and mysticism, I explained the relay. That's not the time for that. Um, so all prayers go to Israel. The resurrection of the dead also only in the land of Israel. Now you can understand why many people want to bury in the land of Israel. We who live in the diaspora will have a bit of a journey when the time comes, when we get to 120 and we're resurrected. It's a firm belief in Judaism, not naivety and not some mumbo jumbo. We pray three times a day, and we are damn serious about it, ladies and gentlemen. We believe it, otherwise we wouldn't say it. Otherwise we'd be liars, we'd be hypocrites, we'd be uh, pretending, and I find many other words which are not complimentary. We are not any of that. We actually mean that. And by the way, anything that we pray for already happened in the past. We have a chazaka, as we say in Hebrew. We have precedents for anybody who's a lawyer here, Right? Advocate, we know exactly what I mean. The resurrection of the dead happened in the past on more than one occasion. Ezekiel is a famous one. There's a whole discussion is allegory or real. There are also the, uh, other cases. There's a case at Sinai where the Neshama left the body. They could not take it. The Muhammad Har Sinai, the, the whole happening at Sinai was so amazing, so breathtaking. Literally, they momentarily died. And there's a verse. 
and Rashi and the other commentators explain the the soul left the body, they momentarily passed out and passed away, and it was returned to them short while afterwards. So we've got the famous story with Elijah, right, and Elisha, and I've read many pieces of nonsense about resuscitation. Anybody who knows the text will realize by the time the prophet actually resuscitated the baby, some considerable time passed through, at least half an hour, possibly several hours, because they had donkeys. They had to go call the prophet. The woman was in the field with a baby. I hope everybody is familiar with the story. And by the time they got the prophet on a donkey or walking back, you know, he didn't have a Cadillac or a Lexus to take him, right? No emails, no mobile phones, you know, fair distance, right? By the time he got the, 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 the child, was dead, physically, clinically, you name it. In any way, shape or form that you define that, he was dead, yet he was resurrected. So this so-called higher criticism nonsense that I keep hearing about, about resuscitation, is no resuscitation. It's pure miracle, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hear this thing about the Sea of Reeds, mistakenly quoted in almost every single book as the Red Sea. I can assure you it was not the Red Sea. It is a lake which had some connection, some estuary, some stream that was connected to the Red Sea, which is a lot of today on the border between a lot Israel and Jordan. The Sea of Reeds, we don't know where it is now. It's disappeared possibly because the dunes, the sand moves all over the place. And we're talking about over 3,000 years ago. It's a long time, so the desert changes all the time, changes faces. Uh, so I, again, I hear about higher criticism. Actually, God said in the book, if you read in the book of Shemot in, uh, in Exodus, he said that he brought the wind and the wind created a wall, etc. What it doesn't explain, how can you walk in a place which otherwise would be muddy and you would sink into and certainly wouldn't be easy to walk on. But the homolytic exegesis, the Midrash, explain that we walked on dry land. We walked on dry land and the water stood like two walls and the Egyptians had the mud in which they sank, right? In fact, it wasn't just one miracle. For those of you who take the trouble to learn the commentary, there are at least 10 miracles. It's a miracle within a miracle and within a miracle. Not to mention that the gold and silver of the Egyptians, which is heavier than the water, which otherwise would sink and disappear for good, actually surfaced so the Israelites could take it with them. And that's what brought the problem. Because when a person gets rich, I'm not saying in every case, but unfortunately it's quite common, they think themselves above society, above the law, above religion possibly, above anything else, the heart goes up, they become hoity. What happens to the people of Israel, they got too much money. And when Moses did not come back on time, they made a mistake with the day, they didn't come the day and night, 40 days, 40 nights. He came 24 hours later. They miscounted, miscalculated, they already got impatient, like Jewish people do. We are very impatient people, it's a fact. Nothing wrong with it, sometimes it's good, but in this case it wasn't so good. And the Satan, the angel of death, to deceive them, showed Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, floating in the air, as it were carried to be buried with his tachrichim, tachrichim, you know, the white ropes, what do you call it in English? Yeah, shroud, 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 right. And then they went to Aaron, they, they already killed the son of Miriam, who intervened, they already killed him by that time. And Aaron saw that he was going to die in a minute, so he thought, all right, I'll do delay action. And what happened, happened. By the way, this golden calf was not just a little piece of statue. I don't know, again, if those of you learned it. This golden calf could walk, could eat grass. The commentary explains it. It wasn't just any golden calf. And so on and so forth. This is why I explained it this morning. We had a wonderful session, didn't we? Yes, we did. Right? Despite the cruise director and his deputy duck, we still managed to all get there on time. <laughs> Despite all the obstacles and the miscommunication and the rudeness that I experienced because they cancelled it without telling me first of all. Despite everything, we're like the Jewish people. The more they try to oppress us, the more we get on with it, you know, the stronger we get. So we managed to get. As I explained this morning, the Torah cannot be learned on the superficial text. No way. One has to learn the commentary and understand what the text is saying. And usually we learn to write according to four levels. We learn it according to pshat. Pshat in Hebrew means literal translation. 
falls near near to that, nearest to that. Then the second one is the hint in the text. That's the second level. Then the third one is the homolytic exegesis, the lighter side, the, the fable side, uh, the storyline of the text. And the last and the most difficult one, which as Ed reminded me today, thank you for that, that you've reached the age of 40 and you've already learned the Mishnah and the Talmud and the, uh, and the Medrash and you've already learned most commentators, you go to learn the Kabbalah. Now Kabbalah is of mysticism. Kabbalah means in Hebrew, receipt and transmission of knowledge. But it became associated with mysticism because Moses received everything at Sinai, and he transmitted it, as it says right at the beginning of Pure about Ethics of the Fathers, it opens up to remove any doubt about the sanctity of the divine aspect of the Torah. It says that Moses received the Torah at Sinai, then he passed it on to Joshua, from Joshua to the elders, 70 elders. 70 elders to the prophets, the prophets to the sages, rabbis, until we have it now. So despite persecutions, prosecutions, pogroms, holocaust, we have still the books. And in spite of the fact that the Talmud was burnt, and the Maimonides books were burnt, and this was burnt, and libraries were put, set on fire, etc., we have retained the knowledge. It is, when you think about it, it is nothing short but miraculous. You show me any superpower, and we were never superpower. Okay, for a brief period of time, the time of King David, uh, Solomon, possibly for a short time fused during the time of the Hasmonean, we were so-called a superpower, but we really never conquered the whole world. And that's not our mission in life. Spiritually, yes, to be lighted to the nations, fine. Show examples of ethics, good behavior, spirituality, definitely. But physically, we are not there like the Romans or the Greeks, the Assyrians, uh, whoever it was, to go and conquer the world. That's never been our mission, right? So superpowers came and went. There's a famous story that this guy comes to Israel to visit, you know, uh, on holiday. Uh, and he heard a lot about all the different cultures. So this rabbi take him to Caesarea, right? Anybody been to Caesarea in Israel? Yes. The Roman ruins, etc. A lot of ruins where I live. And he said, this was a great empire, and this is a great empire. This is a where are they today? Gone. They're not no longer here. The descendants possibly are here, right? Okay, Rome exerts a lot of influence even today to the Vatican. There's no doubt about it. But the old empires have come and gone. But we, the Jewish people, are still here. We we'll always be here because we have this unique ingredient. This unique ingredient that God says to us: even if you're not behaving yourself, even if you get a, a hit on the cheek or a kick or whatever it is, you always get up and go. Get up and fight again. And when you think about it, we've been traumatized for the last 3,000 years or thereabout. We've gone way back. By the way, does anybody know what was the first ever Holocaust? No, I'm not talking about the German Holocaust, the Nazi Holocaust. The first ever Holocaust. The slaughter of the, the babies in the Exodus. You can say that, although the numbers were not like, uh, God forbid, like hundreds of thousands, but you could say this was like a... Uh, precedent, the first mini holocaust. That's, that's a good point. Yes, mm -hmm. Pharaoh. Um, anybody wants to have a guess? I mean, like when hundreds of thousands got killed. Oh, no, no, no. 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 When when Cain killed Abel, because if you look at the percentages, there were only the small handful. No, of I'm talking people. absolute numbers. Ah. Okay. Right. At the time of the Romans. For those of you who read Josephus and read the commentary, the blood, the blood um, had flown to rivers. The Kinneret, my lake where I come from, was also red with blood. Uh, according to different estimates, there were between a few hundred thousand uh, Jews to possibly up to <coughs> two or three millions that were killed by the Romans. In fact, the substantial number of the Jewish people in uh, in those days. Uh, the Talmud actually mentions the number. The number is very great indeed, but if you take the point of view that uh, perhaps the number of Jews at that time did not exceed maybe half a million or whatever, what is 400,000 people or two millions or whatever, it was the first time that systematically Jews were murdered. Okay, not through the gas chambers, but systematically murdered at the time of the failed um, uprising of Bar Kokhba. Kochba was very, very close to win the battle. And he 
made some mistakes, not tactical mistakes, spiritual mistakes, unfortunately. Uh, and we were punished. We were very, very close to have another miracle like we have for Hanukkah. We would have had another festival then. We know about the Romans. Fortunately, it wasn't to happen, so we're still waiting. Just before we sing, I just want to give you another idea. We talk about the children of Israel, right? You know this joke, this um, child asks his dad, Dad, tell me, in the Torah it says, B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, the children of Israel, the children of Israel. And what did the adults do? No. <laughs> right. Does anybody know why Israel has got two names, Jacob and Israel? With Can you say it loud? Yeah, good, good. After right. Jacob struggled with the angel of Esau, right? Yeah. Angel of Esau, and he won. Right. Okay. Right. It's very good. And you know what the meaning of Hebrew Yisrael from the word Sarah? To be on top, a position of kingship, rulership. Today in Israel we say Sar Hau Tsar, the minister responsible for treasury. Sar in Hebrew means the minister. Right. Yisrael come from the word being on top. Jacob, Yaakov means in Hebrew, Ekev. Ekev is here, my heel. Right? What is the difference between here and here? Quite big. You put the crown here when you're in a position of power, and the heel when you're thrown under, literally. Times the pogroms, the crusaders, and so on and so forth. Right? So God says to Yaakov, Al Tirav Yaakov, don't fear my servant Jacob. Even when you're low down, as Jacob, from the word Akeb, I'll be with you and help you. And how much more so when you become Israel, when you become a minister, but at that moment in time when the temple is rebuilt speedily in our days, <coughs> Israel will ever be called, forever be called Israel, and we will get the position in life which we deserve right in the beginning and fulfill the promise. Now we're going to sing a little bit, then we're going to have donuts. People need more sheets? Right. And beforehand, I would like somebody to take the dreidel and spit it for us. Ricky or Rachel, you want to take the dreidel? Can I have another one, please? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Here. <coughs> Right, Tricky, you want to explain to us about the, uh, I think it's my last one, so, have you got one there? Can somebody give it to you and share it? Thank you. Thank you. Ricky, you want to come and speak the trailer for us? No, oh, here, here, publicly. No, just here, just here. Can you manage? Get enough space there? Right. And then move back, move back. Right? Everybody is familiar with the game, right? You know what it says, right? Nes Gadol, great miracle, Haya, happened. Sham, in Israel, but even in Israel, Haya Pop, we say, happened here, okay? And the idea, you know why we spin it? Because life is a circle. It goes round and round and round. Thank you very much, beautiful. And people, you know, use um, chocolate money. Very nice. Maybe you can sing the song for a trade for it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, song number one. Row of ages, let our song praise your saving power. You have been the raging force where our children die. Oh. 
disappearing. Number two. Nearly, nearly, nearly tamid. Bahanukah, nearly adlik. Bahanukah, nearly ayin. Bahanukah, nearly adlik. And again, nearly, nearly, nearly tamid. Bahanukah, nearly adlik. Bahanuka neri ayin, Bahanuka neri adlin. Number three. Yemei ha-Hanuka, Hanuka mikdashen, Beshiru besimcha nemale et libeinu, Sehebibo nasov gam nasov, Suv ganiyot nochal gam narov. To the beginning. ימי החנוכה, חנוכה מתעשן, בשיר ובשמחה נמלא את ליבנו, סביבון, סוף גם לסוף, סוף גניות, נאכל גם לרוב. ההדליקו, העירו, נרות חנוכה רבים, על הניסים ועל הנפלאות אשר חוללו המכבים על הניסים ועל הנפלאות אשר חוללו המכבים Wonderful, חג שמח to everybody Have a wonderful new חודש The חודש of the be blessed month for all of us And anybody who needs healing May God send them speedy recovery And anybody who, um, God forbid a time of mourning, or they get the outside, that God will send them um, consolation. And just before we bite into the um, <coughs> into the uh, <laughs> jelly-filled uh, donuts, I'm just going to recite Kaddish. If you just bear with me for a couple of minutes. You may stand up, please. יש לומר רבם בשמי אב החיים על אלוהר כל ישראל ואמרו אמן עושה שלום במרמה ויעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמרו אמן יעשה שלום יעשה שלום שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל יעשה שלום יעשה שלום Shalom Aleinu Wonderful. Now, let's go and eat something. Just if you wait for me to say the blessing first, if you answer Amen after me, then it's free for all. Free for all. <laughs> <laughs>